Hey, howdy, and good gosh darn morning to you. How you doing? Sorry, that was a bad Wisconsin moment. <laughs> hey, howdy, and good morning. I'm here with the Vortex. It's a cool name. Uh, it doesn't go in circles, because when I think of Vortex, I think of toilet water spinning when you flush. And then I think about, well, if you were south of the equator, it would spin the other way. And then I don't get this done. So I'm coming back to you right now. We're back, surge protectors. Right now, here's what we're gonna do. We love the Eaton, maybe not as some of as much as others, but we still love it. It's like your kids, right? There's always one favorite. We're gonna install this morning the Vortex by PSP. Great product so far. Great company um, as far as service connection specs. We're gonna share the installation manual, the PDF for you guys. Um, they are super flexible in terms of how you can install this three or four different ways But we're going to take out uh, the Eaton first and I want to show you something about the Eaton just a, rem a gentle reminder Stir stir up the water One is that when we're installing we want to keep these wires as short as possible and straight as possible and then we're going to try to always install these as close to the main feeders this is a sub panel Again, we're kind of simulating that it's the main panel, but because it's a sub panel and we have the neutrals isolated from the ground, so we have the ground wire going to the ground bus, neutral wire going to the neutral bus. If this was a main and we had a main bonding jumper or a green screw, whatever you guys have in your panel, we would be able to land the neutral grounds on the same bus for this, okay? So right now we have the Eaton Ultra plugged into this two pole 50. I'm going to remove it um, and install the vortex into the same opening, mostly because I don't want to drill another hole in this panel. This thing is Swiss cheese as it is. So we're going to do that and we're going to use their really cool spades. They make, they have an option and it's UL listed. Thank you. We showed these spades last time and I am interested. Look at these little things. These are supposed to insert behind these main lugs. And again, we kind of get focused on getting the uh, surge protectors installed as close as possible to the feeds. Well, if we are able to insert these behind these lugs for the neutral and the two phases, that's as close as you can get. And it's you all listed for this according to the instructions. So. Before we get into this, we're going to have to shut off the power here in just a second. Uh, Nathan, do you want to shut that off? And do you have a phone? Yes, I do. You'll and notice yes, I would. we're doing this. Paul, I'm going to go grab my phone because, and I'm going to grab my meter. So if you have somebody shut off power and you trust your life to them, I wouldn't. I would. Nathan's going to call me when he's outside the panel to shut off the sub panel feed. And we're going to meter it out to make sure that Nathan is not trying to kill me. Hey, buddy. Hey, howdy. You got it open? I have it open. I'm ready to set it off. You ready? Hang on. Got the meter on there, Paul. We're going to witness whether or not you're trying to kill me. Go ahead. Shut it off. Oh, Lord. Go ahead. Why don't you try that one? No, it's still hot. Look at that. Still 247. This guy is a monster. Go ahead. I'm try. trying to <laughs> and here at the company. I guess I'll try this one. That's it. Thank you for not killing Thank me. Uh, next time. Next time. Thanks, buddy. All right. So we're going to do some demo. We're going to take the Ultra out because I want to use that same enclosure. We've already got some antioxidants. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bad joke. Put an antioxidant because you want to be safe because we don't want any oxidants. All right. Bad dad joke. Always been a bad dad joke. Okay, just, sorry, I'm not used to working in this panel when it's not hot, so it still feels a little bit weird. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'm really interested to see how this 
PSP is going to mount. So if we were doing this in the main panel, the other thing we'd be fighting right now is a arm sized chunk of feeder wire that goes through there in that same area that you'd have to remove before you drill the hole inside the, the panel. Uh, feeders are always, panels are always tight for wire, especially here in this panel. There's our lock nut that can stay there. All right. So we have our open KO. Turn this off just on principle. And then we are going to, here's the vortex. Nice long leads. That is, I think that's what, 24, three feet? So here we go. Let's feed this through. Okay. And you'll notice I took the lock nut off first. And you'll, 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 as you get to this point, you'll realize why because you'll end up with a second lock nut, because I have done it before, where I forgot to take the lock nut off. And then I'm staying there hoping I'm digging around in my pouch for another uh, half inch lock nut. So the other thing I'm missing right now, if this was an outside panel, and it's not, but if it was, I would have a penetration above live parts. This would have to be a ceiling lock nut. It's something that we, I see forgotten or will miss occasionally on jobs. But if you have an outdoor panel, you've got to have uh, where you have a penetration, which is interesting because the other thing is we ran into recently on another job, we have a penetration in the back of an outdoor panel, right? Which happens a lot. We've had inspectors bring that up where we had the penetration in the back. When we were outside, that those penetrations also had to have ceiling lock nuts. Anyway, that's a freebie, uh, only because we had an issue. Um, what was funny is we had the inspector say, ah, you guys need your ceiling lock nuts, and I, I backed it off. My guys did put ceiling lock nuts on it. So, there we go. All right, so we got the vortex here. I'm going to move these hots out of the way. I'm going to land our ground. So the downside about doing this, potentially, and I think I'm going to leave the vortex here in the panel, is if I ever wanted to move it, the wires are going to be so short. Uh, for application, that's great. The problem is if I ever want to move this thing. Okay. And I know I can make it like an inch shorter if I want to screw this higher but my stubby fingers won't fit into some of those spaces. Okay. So we're landing the ground. And a lot of times when you're doing this, you can use your needle nose. Again, if you're of the stubby finger persuasion, your needle nose will fit in these tight spaces so much better. There we go. So with the stranded wire always, the issue is getting it into the terminal without it fraying out. Thank you. So I'm twisting that ahead of time and putting the bend in it and trying to get it so it'll lay into that terminal as easy as possible. Now I've seen a lot of the guys on other channels put spades on theirs. Oh my gosh. And right now I'm thinking, God, I wish I'd put spades on these. Because <laughs> these... These strands do not, there we go. Come on, baby. So, there, that, nice, finally. Good. Now, I'm using my old man torque wrench, which is, it feels like it's about 75 inch pounds. But the other thing, if we're being correct, which doesn't hurt to try to do occasionally, is you're going to have a torque screwdriver on here that's going to allow you to here let's cut this down right now fortunately the neutral bus on the sub panel is super close so i'm just going to cut this down to here 
you know, so I can untwist this because it's all backed up on different stuff. There you go. So I want to get it under my ground. Actually push the ground down and we'll go over, get behind the hots. I want to go up here. So let's cut this down to there. Here we go. Here's the test of the day. Can I use my strippers on my offhand? Oh, my left hand is tough. Oh, no, that's horrible. That's right, you saw me do it. I am not an ambi stripper. <laughs> I can only strip with my right hands. Oh my gosh, I can only imagine the comments now on that. All right, here we go. Again, I'm twisting these. And there's one of the channel, I'm trying to remember the channel name. But he crimps, puts crimps on everything. And a lot of our, our electricians, as you guys, I see on channels from the UK and Europe, do a lot of the cramps and I need to start doing it because I think it's a great practice. It's not required for inspections or anything, but in terms of workmanship, I think that's really, really great. Okay, we're landing the neutral. Hang on. And old man torque. Okay. All right. And we could have used the spades they gave me. They gave me three spades for the hot neutral, the two hots and the neutrals. But so what we're gonna do is we're gonna route these. And it's not because I don't trust Nathan. Uh, but I kind of don't trust Nathan. We're just gonna let's take a look at this one more time. Here's the meter. All right, what do we got here? Because that would be funny if it was, if it was heated back up. No, we're good. Yep, no dying today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these for length again. Our goal to keep the wires straight and short as possible. And we're gonna do the crimps behind the main lugs. So we're gonna take this one all the way over, go behind. Okay. And the crimper I'm using is just my old school hand crimper I have on my linemans. We used to use that all the time when we did barrel crimps on our uh, ground bundles. I don't know if any of you guys still use your, uh, use the brass ground bundles. I don't see those as often anymore as I used to. And linemans, okay. Get my depth set, here we go. Make sure we're clean on the way through. Because again, all the strands absolutely want to come apart and splay out. Okay, we don't have any exposed conductor. A little bit poking out the other side. Crimp. Okay. And a quick tug test. Oh, so that's going to be for the far left phase. This will be for the near phase. We'll cut this here. Twist our strands. Grab our next crimp, our last crimp. And here we go. Nope, do it again. Here we go. Uno mas. Come on, baby, work with me. In nothing exposed on the bottom side. Do a tug. We're good. All right. So let's loosen up our feeders. Okay. That was. And we're going to route this behind.
we're going to stab it in and pull this feeder forward. That is a mess with the antioxidant. All right, there you go. And we got to make sure the feeder stays seated. And again, this would be a termination that would be great with a torque screwdriver. And with aluminum on these feeders, it's a good practice to periodically come back and tighten these anyways, because the aluminum, of course, is so soft, it is going to want to uh, flatten out anyways. Okay. And this will be another one where I'm probably going to use my needle nose because of the fingers. You'll notice I'm putting the flat side because it's offset towards the conductor on the back and this to hang out over the lug so that we can get, there's no standoff, in other words, so we can get it as tight as possible to the conductor. Make sure we're seated. Okay. That felt like about 110 inch pounds. I'm joking, who knows? All right, so we've got our lock nuts. We've got this short. Uh, we've got it as straight as we can while trying to get through the obstacles of the neutral and the ground bus. Um, we're physically secure here. I think we're ready to, um, we push some wires back so we're clear for the dead front. We're ready to get power turned back on. Um, so between you and me, <clears throat> it is weird to see this tap. Um, I've seen other surge protectors that would have you add uh, an eyelet crimp and a nut to go on top of these nuts so you weren't loosening them to create a terminal point that wasn't double lugging. Um, the whole thing here, why I keep going on about it is, are these lugs meant to have two conductors under them? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stand back. Let me make sure we're clear. Yeah, go ahead. Three, two, two, one, or on. That's, there's a delay because the light came on before you said that. You could have killed me. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. There's... I was waiting. I didn't hear any explosions. That's right. No, no, no screaming. So let's see what we got here. We're 240 face to face, 123 and change to neutral, and 124 and change to ground. We're golden, man. Thank you. Close her up and come on in. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. So there you go. We've got the green light. So there's a couple of things here as we're, we're wrapping this up on the installation. Uh, PSP, uh, like the uh, Siemens FS140, has an audible alarm. Um, this thing can be mounted outside. They have a flush mount kit for this. It can be mounted inside the panel. It could also be mounted as a Type 2 if you hook it up to a uh, two-pole, I believe a two-pole 20. You can also, they show in their instructions, which we'll put a link to their PDF. You could also uh, pigtail a two-pole and which they show in their instructions, you can pigtail to an existing breaker. So the, one of the upsides to us looking at something like this is a lot of panels, unlike this one, a lot of your older panels are packed. You don't have room to put in a two pole 20 or 50 or whatever for the surge protector. Um, and you don't have room to plug in a breaker style surge protector. So your options are install a type one, which is connected directly to uh, your feeders without overcurrent because it's built in or tap an existing breaker if it's allowed so love your comments uh, your questions and i'll see you on the next one <laughs>